Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Angela. And welcome to the first card of the month of 2024. So, it is February 3rd, 2024. I've already done the decks I got in January, and now I'm doing the card of the month in January. If you haven't know, if you don't know, every like the last couple of days of December or the first day of January, I always do a year head spread. Um I tend to not met the, a very done a different variation of it for this will be year four um, that I've done and every year I find a different way of doing it slightly different but the basis is the same I pull a year head spread I kind of forget about it throughout the month and then at the end of the month I go back and look last year I did it where I would pull a deck out at the end of the month and I didn't pull the deck I wanted to use for this um i have plenty here though <laughs> um last year i basically pulled from the same deck that i had done the spread with uh, i showed you guys the card of the month and then i pulled a card from a different deck to show either how it complemented or offset that or some way complimented it and it was very intriguing and eye-opening and i thought that was interesting i had followed a lead off don michelle's one of her videos she did the year before um i just went with whatever i thought called to me at the time from the image i had in that card this year i'm doing it a little bit differently because i'm more focused throughout the month on what the card is and i've never really done that before i'm kind of doing deep dives each week um into that specific card um, and seeing how each week it changes or complements or whatever uh, my spread. But first things first. So my card of the year, and I go by the book Tarot for Yourself, um, how to calculate your, your 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 card of the year. It's very mathematical, scientific or not, whatever. Um, and that's the card I've always gone by. Um, last year was the hermit and I tried everything in my power to not be the hermit. <laughs> and I wound up in the hospital with a heart attack and having stints put in and literally in the month of December, it was like December was trying to kill me. And I was like, maybe the hermit had something going like it was. And then it made me take a deeper look of the card I have for this year. And the card I have for this year is the, and this is from the, oh my God. Y'all know what deck this is from. Antique Anatomy. This is one of my favorite Wheel of Fortunes ever. And I never show this deck or use it. So I thought I would incorporate it in my year ahead spread here. Um, and every month I'll be probably doing a different Wheel of Fortune just to add ducks in uh because i have so many now but this is a gorgeous depiction of the wheel of fortune and i just find it interesting how i took it not resisting being the hermit forced me to be a hermit and forced me to take a closer look at my wheel of the year card this year the wheel of fortune card this year um on top of that um, I've had so, I've watched so many videos of people talking about on YouTube, um, doing year head spreads or month ahead spreads for Virgo, uh, which is what I am. And all of them had the wheel of fortune in it. And I'm like, what is happening? And it was like, oh, you're, this is your year. You're going to have a great windfall and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay, I'm with it. I'm with it. And it's more like, um, so far for January, it's more like I had to push the wheel to get it going because <laughs> it was also stagnated like I had been. Um, and I've said before, it was like, I got comfortable in my life, fell asleep on the couch, took a 20 year nap and woke up and was like, why is my joint so stiff? Why is it so hard to move? Um, and that's how January and this whole year so far has felt for me is I'm waking up from a 20 year hiatus of my life. And it's like, it's now or never, it's time to move. It's time to get with the program. It's time to uh, turn the wheel again. And it's almost like the wheel had stagnated like I had been, and I had to literally push it to get it going again. Um, that was my January on top of the fact that 
um, I had more stints put in in January, which were scheduled, not emergency, like they were in December. Um, and so far, we're just taking it one day at a time. Um, so far, my breathing issues have completely gone away. And I'm happy to report that I'm doing a thousand times better than I was this last year, um, just a few weeks ago. <laughs> Um, I still have recovery and ways to go and I've already decided I'm going to do a heart walk this year, which I'm training for now. Um, I've already changed my diet mostly. Um, I, I do backslide because you can't give up salty treats like that. I mean, I tried and it just made me miserable. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm well aware of the amount of sodium in food now and i'm well aware of what i'm ingesting in my body and how much of it i'm ingesting and i never was aware of that before and again to me that's another this might as well say the will of change not the will of fortune because i'm not one for change and the will is always changing always forever up down up down right and so i think that's part of the lesson i'm supposed to be learning in this year 2024 with the will of fortune but I've talked about the Wheel of Fortune enough. So that's my Wheel of the card of the year. My card of the month for January. And I'm actually using this deck, which I never use. And I love it. It's so beautiful. And I don't know why I never use it. It is the Spirit Song Tarot. Uh, it is a U.S. Games deck. Um, it is by Paulina Cassidy. We all know and love. Um, and I decided to use this deck for my year ahead spread. And the card I pulled for January was the Ace of Crystals or the Ace of Pentacles. And as we know, the Aces are beginnings. Um, and it, I don't know if this plays into the Wheel of Fortune, the beginning of my windfall. I don't know because, um, I did start door dashing again, my second job, um, in January, the very tail end of January. So I don't know if that's what that was meaning, but it, to me, I, a lot of people talk about the ace, the, the crystals or the pentacles, which is what this is, uh, more of a monetary value. I've always thinking of it as connecting with the earth, connecting, maybe reconnecting with self or the earth or just the magic of who you are. And I think that is the takeaway that I, I'm taking away from the month of January is that's what the Ace of Pentacles meant for me. It's not about monetary gain. It's about the starting a new journey and starting this new, like I'm, it's almost like I veered from my path and now I'm back on it. And the, the universe is like, yes, finally she's back on the path, back on it. Let's just keep her on it. <laughs> I've started writing again. I started, um, like I said, I, I signed up for the heart walk. I'm doing things I never thought I would do because again, back to the wheel, I, I just, I was like, I, I, I want to live. I, I realized I had been stagnant and slowly, um, uh, and I was slowly dying and the December close call and then me going back in January, the 10th of January and having more work done just solidified wake up you know wake up you've been asleep too long and so i think that is what really um and the words on here is manifestation and prosperity so it it isn't always about monetary gain in in the pentacles right it's it's more about the value of, of things what you value and it january made me take stock of what I want to value. And I had to, I went through a lot of emotions because I went through a lot of mad. I was mad. I was hurt. I was, I hated everybody for a minute after the December issue. And I had to very quickly get over that and be like, you know what? You want to live, right? So start living. And so I just, that's my new motto is do things that bring you joy. And if writing brings me joy, I don't care if anybody reads it or nobody likes it. It's bringing me joy. And I think that was reminding me this whole thing has uh, January reminded me, this is why you started writing to begin with. It wasn't for fame, fortune and all that. It was for the pure joy of it. 
And so I think a lot of things came out of my experiences, which explains why I got the Ace of Crystals in January, because it put me back on my path and it got me back to basics and grounded me again to everything that I know and love. And I found my joy again. <laughs> and I woke up from my 20-something year nap. So that was interesting. Um, and I think that it worked very well with this month. So I want to show you guys. I have a few other Ace of Pentacles here I wanted to show. They're very beautiful. <sighs> Let me see. What am I doing? Dance. So, okay. The deck I used last year for my year ahead spread was the Stolen Child Tarot. So, we're going to start with that card just because it's different. The Ace of Oak. It's just different. And you see the almost like decades of things being buried. It just, I found that interesting. It almost feels like how my January went. Then we have the Super Linares Tarot. Gorgeous. And it's a typical Rider Waite Smith, but it's just beautiful coloring. And I was just like, I gotta have that in there. Look at the flowers and stuff. It looks so real. And then we have the um, Pacific Northwest Tarot. I love me a good sunflower. And then we have probably my favorite Ace of Pentacles ever from the Bonestone and Earth Flesh Tarot. The coloration in that and her, uh, uh, of course, the skull reconnecting with the earth again. There's just something to that because I see pentacles as earth-based and um, groundedness, whereas most people see it as monetary thing. I, I see it as a grounding thing. So I love this. Probably why this is my favorite uh, piece of pentacles ever. Plus the coloring is, I mean, Antorian, come on. Then we have the uncommon tarot, which I just thought was cute and different. And then we have the keeper of the sacred bee, which I mean, come on. And the, I love the, the henna tattoos. Um, it's just beautiful on the hand. And then we got the bee in there. It's a honeycomb. We have the key tarot, which reminds me a lot of the Super Linares. Again, we, it looks like a real photo here. here. It's stunning. It's just a very well manicured lawn. <laughs> and we have, again, Anatorian Tarot of the Abyss. And again, we have this earthy groundedness. And you know what's funny? I just realized that. My last card is her uh is the deck the lay tor lay terror arthurian by claire duvall this is also anatorian's artwork and all three of these are this grounded um these two more so together but this one also is there's this grounded earthiness there's a path there and you got the abundance of the 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 food and the pentacle. Um, all three of those speak a very grounded language, and I love that. And that's probably why they're probably my favorites. <laughs> uh, but this one is my favorite of all time, Ace of Pentacles. And then I wanted to read to you. The Keeper of the Sacred Bee, the book on here. I wrote down notes of what I'm like, because I ain't remembered anything anymore. <sighs> this Keeper of the Sacred Bee. Uh, 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 Ace of Pentacles. Okay. It says the Ace of Pentacles. The hand in the Ace of Pentacles is offering the pentacles of the bee to you. The invitation is for you to receive and hold on to your wealth. 
The coin center has seven cells, each filled with a precious bee egg that will transform and emerge from its cell in a few days, meaning the energy and power to allow wealth, comfort, pro pro property, and skills into your life. Pay attention to the opportunities in front of you. And then, of course, reverse a lucrative opportunity falling through, inability to hold on to wealth and sufficient resources and happiness, even if wealthy. And it's to me, it's more like I heard once that because manifestation is a real it's a real thing, right? Um, if you feel like you don't deserve wealth, you won't have it. Even if you are trying to manifest it, even if you are trying to, you're praying every day. And that's why a lot of people are like, oh, manifestation doesn't work. I prayed for years for, you know, something to happen. But if you deep down inside don't believe you deserve it, you're not going to get it. And I just, I'm waking up to that more and more, um, that thought process. Cause I'm like, oh, nobody's going to read my book. Uh, nobody's going to do this or nobody's going to like this. And I, I don't know when I came back to caring what other people thought <laughs> is my big thing. I'm like, when did I start caring again? What other people thought or, you know, whatever. And I'm just like, it's, it's crazy because if I stop caring what other people think and just do what brings me joy, I will manifest these things without even trying. It, and I think that's um, a really good point to make in the the Ace of Pentacles here. Is it's this is the clean slate starting over. Um, this is the first card of the year, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, so here I want to read to you. Uh, Actually, I'm just going to pause you real quick. Okay. So I'm going to pull out. Uh, so we have the Ace of Pentacles here for the month of January. Real quick before I run out of time. I'm going to pull from the. Oh my God. Lorenzi Tarot. This is also a U.S. Games book or deck. Um, I can barely shuffle this because stick cards. And I've decided in, instead of just pairing it with. Uh, things that aesthetically look beautiful. I'm going to pair it with a deck that I haven't used. So each month will feature a different deck that I don't normally use all the time. Um, just to get those into the rotation and show people off some pretty cards because that's what they're here for. So give me a card about what, what can we glean from January, wrap up January here. And it popped out with the King of Cups. Awesome. You know, it doesn't aesthetically look to get look right, but the King of Cups. And that makes sense because I had to learn to control a bunch of emotions very quickly. And I think I got a handle on them. Um in January, um, I realized I had to come to terms with a lot of things very quickly, and that all happened in January. So, the King of Cups to me is the epitome of controlled emotion. Like he knows when to be soft, he knows when to be hard. He's he's balanced, and I think that it is how I ended my January. Um, so that's very succinct to me in these two cards, between these car two cards of how my January went. So that's quite interesting. But that's all I have for you guys. If you have any uh, questions, comments, concerns, don't hesitate to comment below. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more, please subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification button so you're alerted to any future videos. And y'all have a good night. Bye.